This is a quick demo of our web service interface of RTBRs, and I'm going to be showing you how to access it and some of the features that you will find. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using uh, Windows 8 and Internet Explorer 10. So to start, um, I'm connected directly on my network, so my DVR is right next to me, and uh, I'm going to type the internal IP of the unit. And this is the initial web interface. So uh, once I access uh, the web interface, I'm going to be able to see the layout of my camera. So uh, as you see, there's four uh, squares or four windows. This is the standard layout. So here on the bottom, you can see more layouts for your cameras up to 36. Really neat, really easy to use. You can go full screen if you want to and uh, change the layout on full screen as well. Very easy. To X out of uh, full screen, just click again and you go back to the main interface. Uh, as you see to the left side, you can see the name of your cameras. For uh, this DVR, we already label each camera, but by default is camera one, two, three. They are labeled that way. And this is a hybrid DVR, so you will have this arrow right here that goes to all the way to 32 channels. My first 17 through 20, um, they are megapixel cameras, as you see. I just click on it and I'm able to see them. It's very easy to open a camera. You have also an option right next to the camera. It's an arrow that allows you to open the camera using the extra stream for a lower resolution and for better streaming. When you have um, lower bandwidth, it's recommended to use uh, extra stream for a lower resolution. That does, does not affect the uh, way that the DVR is recorded or anything like that. It's just for viewing purposes. Uh, on the right side, you will see the PTZ panel. You will have uh, an arrow right here. If you click on it, you'll have more options here that you can apply to your PTZ cameras. You have color settings, and this applies only to uh, the web service. It doesn't apply the recording. So if I wanted to change the color settings of this camera, just for the web service interface, I just choose the camera, and that's pretty much it. It will not affect the recordings or uh, the DVR itself just for the web service. If I wanted to reset, I just click reset, and that's it. It's pretty simple. Here you have the more option. You can choose where the, uh, the picture path will go or where the pictures that you take, the snapshots for a particular camera will go. So you can click on it and they by default go to the C drive on this folder right there. If I click OK, it says uh, I set it successfully. I can change that if I want to. As well as for the uh, record path, if you wanted to record uh, this particular channel to your computer, you can tell it to do so and then it will save it on this um, particular folder on the C drive. Um, I can reboot the DVR from here. If I click on it, it will, it will say, do you really want to reboot it? You click OK. As long as you're, nobody is logged in at the DVR itself, you will be able to do so. On the top, you will see um, the playback. You can access footage from your DVR by selecting the beginning time and the end time and the channel that you wanted to review video. For example, if I want to review video for one of my megapixels, I just choose that channel and choose mainstream because that's the quality I wanted to see. And this is the time, let's say the 14 till today, and I just click search. And it shows me the first 100 records for, uh, for that particular channel. And I, what I have to do is just double click on it and I will be able to see uh, my footage at that particular time. You can see here the time. You can uh, zoom in, digital zoom. You, can, you have these options right here on the top let on the top right corner of each window you can see you have that option right there so while I'm reviewing footage I can just double click on it and click the magnifier for, for example digital zoom just click on it make a square and then I will zoom in into that picture and I can see clearly uh, from the web service uh, the area that I digitally zoom if I wanted to record and just click that uh, option right there with local record and it will record to your computer I can uh, take a snapshot. Let's play a different uh, footage right there. I can take a snapshot of it. That's it, and it will show me here uh, the snapshot that I took. Let's go back to my desktop. Let's go start desktop. There you go. And many functions you can uh, do from here. Let's change this to the 16 channel layout, and I'm gonna open a certain cameras. Let's open this. This 
I can just simply click the square I wanted to open that particular camera and then group them if I want to. For example, I wanted to um, add a particular camera to a, a, a region here or a window, I just simply drag it there and this camera will go in this position. So it's very simple to use. Uh, again, I can just uh, double click on it and I, if I have, for example, a microphone, I can just click on it and I will be able to hear audio from it. I have a particular camera here in the sales office that I, I have a microphone in it and um, if someone is over there, you, you will be able to hear um, you know, people talking. And um, uh, another function that this particular DVR or all of our DVRs have is the ability to control a PDZ from it. So as long as the PDZ is connected to uh, the DVR, you can control them from here. For example, I wanted to move this camera. I can just move it from here. I can uh, zoom in if I want. Everything from the web service is very simple. Everything is uh, through the network and you can access uh, the OSD of the camera. If the camera has uh, compatible OSD, you can just input the preset number and then uh, the OSD will appear there and you will be able to control your cameras. Let's close all these cameras. Under the configuration, you are pretty much accessing the configurations of the DVR. Everything that it has to do with the DVR. You have the version, you can see the uh, hard drive info, the status of the hard drives from here. Uh, you can see the logs, you can search for any kind of logs you want. Uh, you can access the general configurations of the DVR such as time, uh, the date format and so on. You can label your DVR if you want to. Uh, under ENCO you can access the configurations or the resolution of the DVR uh, and from here you can set any kind of resolution your DVR supports from this interface. Um, for example, this DVR supports up to D1 at 30 frames per second and I can just choose that to all of the channels and copy all of that information to all of the channels if I want to. Um, you can label the cameras from here. There is many things that you can enable from here. You can configure the DVR to record when it's motion at a particular uh, resolution from here as well. Um, you can enable audio if you have uh, microphones connected to the DVR. You can also hear the audio using the extra stream and so on. It's very simple to use. From here you can access the color settings and adjust them if you want to and this will uh, affect the recording of that particular channel. So you have to be very careful when you um, change any settings in this uh, because it will affect the quality and uh, how the camera is recording on the DVR. On their schedule, you can configure different types of schedules. Uh, I can configure different types of recording if I want to for different periods. Motion detection, regular detection for every day. I mean, it's very simple to use. Uh, and I can copy all of that information to all of the channels if I want to and save them. RS-232, if you have an RS-232 device, uh, you can connect it on the back of a DVR through the RS-232 port and control the DVR. You can access the network um, information or the network settings. Um, uh, from here, you can change the IP address. You can configure the, the DVR's DHCP. You can change its ports. Uh, it's very simple to use. There's many other uh, features that you can change from here. For example, you can enable email notification, uh, DDNS, very simple to use. And um, uh, you can also configure UPnP, so you don't have to port forward any ports on your router if your router support that feature you basically will enable that feature and your DVR will pour forward by itself. You can configure the detection settings of the DVR, how sensitive the cameras are going to be, uh, the anti-dither, how many cameras a particular channel is going to record when motion happens and so on. Uh, you can uh, configure pan tilt zooms here. This is where you input the information of the pan tilt zoom camera, for example the protocol and the address and the bot rate and all of this have to match whatever the camera is configured to in order for you to move it. Uh, you can default the entire settings of the DVR if you want to. You can manage your DVRs from here. You can uh, format it, read and write, uh, set it up as redundant, use a particular drive as a snapshot drive. I mean, it's very simple to use. At normality, uh, you can set different type of events and how the DVR is going to alert you. You can uh, set the DVR to send you an email when an, uh, no disk on the DVR or when a disk goes bad, uh, when you don't have space in a disk or the DVR goes offline for some reason. 
uh, there's many things you can configure in here. Alarm I.O., you can configure uh, the status of the alarm outputs of your DVR. On the record, you can tell the DVR to record using the mainstream or the extra stream. And how is it going to be uh, recording? If it's going to be based on the schedule that you set previously. Manual means that it's going to record non-stop or stop completely the recordings. Under account, you can add users, modify users, you can delete users, um, you can modify groups, add groups. This is pretty much the groups and the, and the usernames that they're going to be accessing your DVR uh, from within the network or from outside the network or from your phone. Under snapshots, we can uh, tell the DVR to set up certain snapshots based on, on schedule uh, or a trigger when uh, motion happens or uh, an alarm input. Uh, it's triggered, etc. Auto maintenance, you can tell the DVR to auto reboot or not to reboot at all. You can also tell the DVR to uh, auto delete certain files uh, or customize a uh, period of days of when you wanted to delete those files. The video matrix, if you have a spot out on your DVR, you can access the, the window view. Uh, this particular DVR has a uh, spot out, so I can tell the DVR to display certain uh, groups of cameras. On the remote device, I can search for the IP cameras I have on my network and add them to the digital channels of the DVR. It's very simple. You just click IP search, and if there is any cameras on the network, your DVR will find them, and then you can choose uh, the IP address and just simply add them to the channels you want. Very simple. Card overlay, if you have a POS system, you can connect it to the DVR either from the network or through the RS-232 port and overlay information to uh, one of the channels of the DVR. And uh, this is pretty much the configurations that you can do on your DVR from the web service. I hope this has been informative to you and thank you for watching.